Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, but welcome if you are new. My name is Dana Brown and I am here on my YouTube channel, Dana Creates, and I am joining in with two other DIYers here on YouTube. We are going to do the $5 Dollar Tree DIY Challenge. It's only taken me two tries to get that. Try saying that a million times. I'm not going to. We want to thank our two hosts for this challenge, Drea and Rhea. Drea is from Clueless Mama DIY. Rhea is from Rhea's World of Ideas. And these two hosts are helping us join as different YouTubers have DIY videos or crafting videos or of that sort and they are helping us put together a large playlist of creators in order to do budget-friendly craft projects. What I'm going to do today is a Christmas craft. I love to make things for Christmas. I love to make them myself. I love to make them as cheap as possible. I like to get ideas from the store and then see if I can do it myself for cheaper. What I need you to do is subscribe to my channel, and then after you're done watching this video, I need you to go check out the playlist, and all the other creators on that playlist have got their videos all loaded, and you're ready for you to watch and get inspiration from them as well. So I have a really fun project to work on today, and it's super easy, and it's under $5. So the other day, I was at the dollar store, and one of the things that I like to do is find items at the dollar stores, and I like to make something with it. So then I brought it home and I painted it black. It says Merry and Bright. I'm put it against my shirt here, maybe you can see it a little bit better. I just used black chalk paint, but you could re use regular black acrylic paint. That will work just fine. I just happened to have a chalk paint, so that's what I used. The next thing you need to make this project is a board. I had a large piece of scrap wood in my garage, but you don't even need a piece of wood. You could actually go to the dollar store and get a piece of foam board. You could get a piece of cardboard. You could get a wood round from Michael's or Hobby Lobby or a square piece of wood from either one of those stores. And really the cost of this wood, I got a huge 10 foot piece in order to make a whole bunch of signs for my sister's wedding. And this is just a leftover piece. But the ent entire 10 foot piece was only like eight dollars so this little teeny tiny chunk of it really did not cost me a whole lot of money so we are still under the five dollars for this challenge i just don't know exactly how much that section of the wood cost me but you could definitely use other products to make it cheaper as well so what we're going to do today is we're going to create a buffalo check on this board let me tell you a little secret though i don't like the black and white buffalo check fad and I don't like the red and black buffalo check fad. I don't like it. It's not my thing. Totally fine if, if it's yours. I totally get it because I'm, I have my own things that I'm addicted to and people are like, why are you still addicted to that? It's totally fine. It's my thing and that's okay. So I realized that I like red and white. That's the theme within all of my decorations, pops of red, whites, and so I'm going to do a red and white buffalo check. So it's a little bit different, but the concept is still the same as doing a red and black and a black and white. But I wanna show you the steps involved in order to make the buffalo pattern. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our surface white. I'm going to use a chalk paint in white, just because that's what I have, and chalk paint actually goes on in less coats than the regular acrylic does. But no matter what your surface is, start with the white color. All right, so we painted the board white. I actually did two coats, and then I've got some blue painter's tape on here, and I've taped them on in little stripes. Use little strips of the same width tape to determine the gap in between. And then add your layers of tape. Make sure you press it down really well, get out the edge air bubbles, and then you move your strips to the next layer. Next, you're gonna mix a very pale pink and paint all the white portions of the board. All right, so I'm gonna try really hard to explain what I'm doing here. I mixed this color and when I put it on, it matched too close to what I already had. So what I'm doing is actually adding just the straight red, but you don't want it to go on as a straight red, as that bold red color. So what I'm kind of doing is kind of a combination of this one and this one. So I'm starting out with the red color and just putting it on the tip of my brush. And then I'm just doing broad strokes with that dark red color and getting it on the board in a light, 
layer. But then because I have so much of the pink in my brush, I'm using the back end of that brush, blend in that deep red color so that it's not so dark, but we're not necessarily adding a pink. I hope that makes sense. See the difference between this one and this one right here? We don't want the pale pink, but we don't want dark red. Next up, you're gonna put tape going the opposite direction all the way across and paint that the light pink color that we originally did on the stripes. And then you're gonna repeat that. So you're gonna do the light pink, let that dry, and then the darker, but not completely dark red over the top of that. Okay, so we've got all of those spots painted in the pale pink and then that darker red. So we've taped going the opposite direction, but we left the original tape going this direction. And we're gonna make these little boxes. And that is the color we're gonna paint the regular deep red that we have been mixing all along. Also, we started in the center, we marked the center point and worked our lines moving out so we kinda have an even start to the pattern. All right, so I'm only showing you half of it so far. I'm gonna do at least two or three coats in each of these squares. And I ran out of tape, so I'm gonna wait till this side dries, and then we'll do two or three coats and move the tape to the other side. All right, it's all done. And I realized when I got it done that it would be really cute for summertime too because it kind of looks like a tablecloth. So then I didn't want to permanently attach this sign to it. What I want to do is just attach a nail up here at the top and then I can just attach whatever sign I want to. And I thought I could add like a 4th of July one, a star or something, even like Valentine's I thought would be kind of cute. I'll show you what it looks like on my mantle when it's all said and done. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you check out the playlist in the description so you can check out all the other makers that have joined this collab. And a special thanks to our hosts, Drea and Rhea, for bringing us all together as creators. We're so grateful for them and all that they did to make this happen for us. So make sure you go check out their videos as well as they made all of this happen. So thank you again. Make sure you subscribe, like, and come back for more.